Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the J.A. King Testing Webinar. My name is Lisa Messenger, and I'm the Testing Division Manager here for J.A. King. I also have Jim Greer, our National Account Manager, joining us today. I would like to remind everyone that we are recording this webinar, and you will be able to reach the slide deck and the recording on the webinar section of our website after this is over. With that, I think we'll get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is why we test. You know, what is the value in testing? Does testing save you money? That sort of thing. So one of the reasons why we test is, of course, warranty claims. You know, we want to minimize warranty claims. You want to make sure you're making a good quality product. But it's even bigger than that. You use this section, you want to actually determine what the estimated product life would be. You want to ensure that the product is going to work in the environment that it was intended to work in. And this, this helps you determine how long you should warranty your product. Should it be a 30-day warranty or a year-long warranty? And it also helps you determine what types of parts that you should keep on hand at your service centers. This is also an area where you would want to determine what is abuse and what is normal wear and tear on your particular part. It would um, help you to determine those types of things. So another reason why you would, you would actually test would be safety and litigation. So in 2008, Northwestern University did a study of the top um, Fortune 200 companies here in the U.S., and they determined that they averaged about $115 million a year in litigation costs. And this was not awards. This was just, you know, just legal fees and that sort of thing that they did to ensure that their products would be safe in there and um, that they wouldn't have to pay a claim. So the types of things that you would do for safety testing, well, we do airbag, of course, deployment testing, and that's a safety-related test. But your pharmaceutical companies would do, you know, drug testing to ensure that a, their people would not have a reaction to that drug, you know, the first time they take it. Or if you're a consumer product, like a coffee maker or a toaster oven, you don't want to have your customer plug it into an outlet and, you know, be burned or something. Um, of course, your vehicle manufacturers do things like crash testing to see how well their cars hold up in, in an accident. So those are types of things that are done in the safety area. So we also do testing because we're told to. So there's regulatory reasons. So like for motorized vehicles, you have the National Highway Safety um, Transportation Department, and they write your federal motor vehicle standards, your FMVSS standards. So if you're going to have a vehicle that's running on the roads here in the U.S., you have to meet those standards. Well, other industries have the same thing. So if you're consumer products, you might want a CE mark or a UL mark. Or if you're dentistry, you might want an ADA mark. So you're trying to meet the different specifications and requirements that these regulatory bodies put in place. If you're going to ship overseas to Japan or Europe or Mexico, each one of these have their own regulatory bodies, and you have to meet their standards and their specifications as well. All right, so manufacturing and productivity. We spend thousands and thousands of dollars trying to be more productive um, in our assembly processes. So you want to ensure that your parts, when they make it to your assembly line or your production environment, that they are going to work the way they're supposed to. So if you change something like a polymer that could be more brittle, you wouldn't want that part to be breaking every time it was snapped by either a robot or a human because that could shut your line down and there goes your productivity out the window. So we do reliability and durability type testing, and this is just to determine, it helps determine that life cycle of your part that we talked about. Um, you, do, you do life cycle testing, so you would want to you know, cycle your part, open and close a car door, open and close a toaster oven door, cycle water through a coffee maker, whatever it is to determine what the life cycle would be. You do some drop testing because you wouldn't want something to break the first time you dropped it. And you might do some environmental testing to see how well a part was going to hold up, say, in an Alaskan environment or a Central American environment. You know, it has to work in the desert and it has to work when it's super cold. So the engineering and design phase development, there's tons of testing that's done during this phase. You want to ensure that the design that you have is actually going to work and that it works the way you want to. You might be doing some comparison testing during this to a competitive product. Um, we talk about protection, so if you're applying for a patent, you would want to have all the analysis and everything done from your testing 
to prove that you know you deserve that patent. And of course, the number one reason that we we do testing is for customer satisfaction. And as you know, you can put a dollar value on all of these things. So if you do testing and you do it well, it should indeed save you money. Okay, so now that we've talked about why we do testing, we can talk a little bit about the types of testing services that J.A. King offers and maybe how that they could help you with your testing needs. So the first thing I want to talk about is environmental testing. We have a, a huge environmental test labs. We have everything from reach-in chambers to chambers big enough to drive cars in. We do a lot of the temperature and humidity testing, so we're doing the static and the dynamic. So Lisa, can you explain uh, why you would want to do uh, static or dynamic? Sure. The static testing is more like your long-term, like your long-term heat storage or long-term storage. So if you're shipping your parts in containers over the sea, overseas, like maybe to Europe, or if you have them going across the country in the back of a truck, you want to make sure they're going to hold up in those types of environments. And so you do a lot of static testing to look for failures in that mode. With the dynamic, that's more your alternating climate. And that's where you're doing your advanced aging techniques, where you're simulating like 20 years in 10 days. So you, you do some aggressive temps or some aggressive humidities or ice or rain or whatever you're doing. And you try to simulate a long period of time or a life cycle in a short few days using a chamber like that. Um, some of the other types of chambers that we do have, we do have a condensing humidity chamber. We do have the ability to make it rain and snow in our chambers, so we can do some icing and de-icing. Uh, we have sun simulation chambers, um, so we do the full spectrum analysis and the xenon art. Okay, on the sun simulation chambers, can you elaborate a little bit on the difference between the uh, full spectrum and the xenon art? Sure. The Xenon Arc usually is a little bit smaller platform, and we do a lot of plaque testing, and it, is, it has the condensing humidity, the weathering ability um, inside with the UV as well. The full spectrum analysis is more your noonday sun. It's your UVA, UVB, and IR all at one time while we're also producing climates in that chamber. You can see a picture of our sun chamber over here. We have a couple of different um, styles of these. Um, they are large enough that you could drive a car in. So one of the areas that uh, we see a lot of sun simulation is interior car components, but you also see them with uh, outdoor fencing and siding and things like that, anything that would be exposed to the sun for a long period of time. So what we will do, so say we're doing a car interior, we actually can take a box and we can create a greenhouse effect where we would actually use this box to simulate a car interior that's parked in the desert. So we would instrument this box with irradiance meters, your black standard, um, temperature, thermocouples, RTD, sensors, airflow, and we actually monitor the layering in the box, the greenhouse effect in the box, and then we see how the part's going to react to full noonday sun. It's just a little different. And we can alternate that. We have the ability to change the irradiance. So you can have 1,000 watts per meter square. You can have 3,000 watts per meter square. It's really cool. Um, another area where we do quite a bit of work is in salt spray. We do the NACL, which is your ASTM B117, is your, your most popular salt fog test. So we do that. And then we also have a cash chamber where we do the copper set it, you know, more advanced, a little more corrosive type salt spray. Okay, we have um, a materials testing section. So we do things like crosshatch and surface energy, tensile compression, gloss. I'm just not going to read them all off, but you can see some of these. What we do here, a lot of times we do these things pre and post test. So say it's color and gloss and you're going to do a sun simulation test. We'll take a color and gloss reading, then we'll put it through a sun simulation cycle, and then we'll do another color and gloss reading to see how, you know, how well it works. So you can see over here kind of we also do ball drop testing. You see a picture of a ball drop tester that we... Yeah, I, I, I see that. In, in the picture you have the camera there. What does that actually mean? Well, with this particular test, we actually use the camera and we high-speed video the impact. Because we do some airbag testing, we have tons of high-speed cameras. And so we'll do that sometimes, even if we're doing drop testing, say, for packaging, where you would have a toaster oven or something and you wanted to make sure it was going to survive in its shipping environment, we can drop it on its corner, its side, its head, whatever we're doing, and we can actually, we can actually video um, that with the, with the um, camera so you can see that. It's pretty cool. All right, we do 
chemical testing as well. We do flammability. We can do the horizontal and the vertical burn. So you mentioned horizontal and vertical. So who would actually use these different tests? Okay, so like the horizontal testing is used a lot in automotive. So we do the FMVSS302. That's your Federal Motor Vehicle Spec for flammability in cars. With the vertical burn, um, you'll see that some in airspace. You see it a lot in textile. Um, we also do odor testing. So we do mold and mildew. We do um, chemical media resistance. So that's like where you would take brake fluid or oil or different types of maybe cleaning agents and you would subject a part to that and then we can put it through a temperature cycle to see how things work. I mean, you would not want to clean your dashboard in your car and then set it in the sun and have it fade out. So we look for that type of resistance. Um, and then of course we do some water jet and spray testing. So most people know we do a lot of airbag testing here. Um, tons of it. So everybody's like, oh, you test airbags. We do that. We actually can test an individual airbag, but most of the time what we're testing here is the system. So we're looking at the instrument panel, the doors, the seats, the headliner, side bolster, whatever it is that the customer has, we're wanting to make sure that the complete system works, that the instrument panel would open up and allow that airbag to flow through and that it would maintain its timing and nothing would leave the system, that sort of thing that sort of test. Um, we can do airbag deployment tests, like I said, one bag at a time, multiple bags at a time, every airbag in the car, one time, if that's what you need. Um, we also do airbag occupancy testing. This is like your fifth percentile female test. That's where they say 5% of the population um, is childlike in the female um, population. And so we actually do a test where we want to make sure that the Matt tells the airbag to fire when it's supposed to. So like if the lady's leaning forward, it shouldn't fire. If she's leaning back, it should fire. That kind of thing. We're just testing to make sure it does what it's supposed to. And we do that with car seats and, and all as well. We also do airbag disposal services. So we have the ability to get rid of your airbag. Um, for you, you cannot just throw an airbag in the landfill anymore. These are considered incendiary devices, so you actually have to dispose of them properly and be able to prove that you disposed of them properly. So we barcode every airbag that we get. We dispose of it um, properly, and we actually send it through a recycle chain. We don't just throw that in the dump either. Make sure it's safe for the environment. All right, some of the other things that J.A. King can do for you is the specialty testing or the custom testing. So we can do some, some development or quality engineering support for you. If you have a test spec and you're not sure what you should test or shouldn't test, we can help you determine that. We have the ability to design a test for you or review a test design that maybe you did yourself if you, if you need help with that. I kind of lump reliability, life cycle, and functional testing together but we have a full engineering group, so we can do any of the custom rigs for that type of test that you would want done. We can do, you can see a mattress tester here that, that we built, but it could be anything from open and closing a car door to a uh, toaster oven, walking a, a boot across carpet, uh, I don't know, it, pretty much anything you can think of that would be a custom life cycle test, we could do that for you. And we could do that at climate because we have the large chambers we sometimes do testing or we'll do it in a lab environment and then we'll turn around and do the same test over in climate to see how or if something changed. And sometimes we do it with designs that we built and we also have a robot that has a full thermal suit so we can send the robot into the, into the chambers if we need to. Um, if you need fixturing support, we have the ability to design and build fixtures. Um, we can also do some on-site testing services or witnessing if you need something like that done. All right, so there's lots of test labs out there. Why would you choose J.A. King? Okay, well, we have 80 plus years of testing experience. Um, we have several experts in our testing lab that focus on the seven major industry groups that we, we at J.A. King focus on, which is your motorized vehicles, airspace, consumer products, food and beverage, chemical, energy, and life sciences. So we have experts or test engineers in each one of these fields that focus on the specifications in that particular industry. So we also have industry business managers that also support these particular industries. 
we call these our unfair competitive advantage. And that is because they are consistently learning, um, constantly going over what is new in that particular industry and learning what is going to be coming down the pipe next. If there's a new specification or something that comes out, then they're going to learn that and, and know that and make sure we are aware of it. So, Lisa, you mentioned testing experts and the industry business managers. Uh, can you elaborate a little more on the difference between these two? Sure. Okay, the testing experts, they are test engineers that work in the lab every day. They're in there actually doing the test, producing the test, and they just focus on their specifications and learning the testing piece. The industry business managers, they are learning what is going on in that industry. They want to know what's the next thing. If there's a new TS coming out for automotive, they're going to get into that and see how that affects not just testing, but everything that J.A. King does. So their calibration um, division, our torque division, our um, QC audit, our contract inspection that we do, uh, product sales, you know, we represent um, products like optical gauging products, uh, RAM optical, and certified comparator products. So we actually sell products. So they're going to know what's coming out with that and how that's going to affect their particular industry. But it is all industry-based and focused. And that's all they do all day long is learn what's going on in that particular industry. Okay, another thing that J. King, another competitive advantage we have is we have a full service engineering group. So they can pretty much design and build any type of test rig that you need. So even if you didn't want us to do the testing, they could design and build a test rig and, and sell it to you. And they have mechanical engineers and electrical engineers and software writers. They're able to give you your product with engineering drawings and the whole nine yards. They can design and build fixtures. They can do automation. And now, by adding Cross, we also have access to their robotics division and their automation division. So there's not not too much we can't we can't do on the engineering side of things. We also have the ability to offer a complete test package. If there is a test that we're not performing yet, something maybe that we're going to do in the future. We have sister test labs that we work with, and so you can send us your complete test package, and then we would third party whatever we couldn't do yet and um, do what we could, so you don't have to go to multiple labs if you don't want to. We work with a lot of various labs. They come to us, so we go to them. That's how that works. Um, we also have a full service metrology lab, so we can do a lot of measurement pre and post tests. So we have CMMs, roundness machines, surface finish, contour gauging, vision systems, white light, blue light scanners, um, photogrammetry. I mentioned photogrammetry because we do a ton of photogrammetry measurement pre and post test. So we'll take like an instrument panel and we'll do a photogrammetry shot, basically create a blueprint. And then we'll put that, that part into, say, a sun chamber and we'll send it through a cycle. When it's done, we bring it back out, we shoot it again, and then we take those two models and we lay them on top of each other give you a nice pretty topo map, allow you to see really what happened during that test. It's, it's really cool. Okay, so some of the things I would like to share with you, we have some upcoming um, webinars. We're going to do a webinar, more informational type webinar on sun simulation and one on airbag deployment testing. These are going to help you get um, more of an in-depth feel of exactly why you would do that testing, what you can see during that testing, the types of test methods that are used during that test method. It's just a learning section. So if you're interested in those, please pay attention to our webinar section of the website, and there will be some postings as to when those are going to be available. So now I'm going to open it up to questions. If you have a question, please use the chat box, and we'll get right away to answering them. Thank you. OK. Um, here, here's a question coming through now. Um, somebody wants to know if we offer vibration testing. Currently, we do not, but we have just purchased a large vibration chamber, and it is going to be up and running probably around the middle of January with all the certifications and everything. Um, it's going to be a large chamber. has a large agree chamber on it, so we'll be able to shake and bake at the same time, as they say. Um, and it's like I said, it's very large. We could hold parts up to about half a car on that. So super excited, ready for that to get available. Okay, here's uh, another one coming through. Uh, do you do chemical analysis of samples? 
Currently, we do not. We do not have a gas um, chromatograph, graph, so we're not doing that yet. I do have some sister labs that I use that I could send something to for you. Um, and the next one is, uh, can we do any rainfall simulation testing? We have the ability to do some of that. We would have to look at the individual specifications to make sure it meets what we would be doing inside our chamber. Okay, uh, another one. Do you offer testing at all the JA King locations? And if not, how would I get my parts to you? Um, no, currently we do all of our testing at our Greenville, South Carolina location, though expansion is, um, is something that we are looking at very hard and we may be bringing some labs you know, to your local area soon. But right now everything is done in Greenville. Depending on your parts, we do have vans and things like that that run in between our different locations. So if it can fit in our van, then we'd be willing to move that for you. But a lot of the parts that we do for testing are, are really um, very large. So we would just have you ship those in, and that's usually not a problem. I get, I get um, test parts from Mexico. I get test parts from Europe. So shipping them to us is not an issue. Okay, good. Uh, here we go. How do we get pricing for testing? And what are the steps when a customer says they need a test we provide? Okay, well normally the first thing we would ask you for is to tell us what specification you're testing to. Then we would need to know what the part is, the size of the part, and how many parts you're testing. So we can determine if it's chamber work, you know, the size of the chamber. If the part needs to be fixtured and you have a fixture, we would want to know the size of that. If you don't have a fixture and we're going to be building that, then we would have some questions, you know, maybe some blueprints, things like that to get that made. Um, we would also want to know if you have any pre- or post-test requirements, like if you wanted it high-speed videoed or if you wanted uh, like color or gloss done beforehand. And we may ask you some questions about exactly what it is you're looking for. If you've changed the polymer and you're looking to see if something's more brittle or, or that, we'd like to know a little bit about what you're expecting to see. If you don't have a test specification and you're looking for us to help you develop that, then we're going to have a lot of questions for you about how your materials, what materials are used, how your parts put together, you know, blueprints, all of that sort of thing. Yeah, and, and that's part of what, where, where my job comes in uh, along with being the account manager and uh, working with the engineering department is to uh, walk you through the steps on uh, what you actually need. So, okay. got uh, another one. Some of our parts are propri proprietary. Um, are you willing to sign an NDA? Oh, absolutely. We sign NDAs with all of our customers and, of course, all of our employees sign NDAs with us, so you have full cover and full protection. I mean, if you walk through our lab, you'll see that all of our labs actually have keypads and there's lots and people can't just go through there. We have prototype parts and vehicles and things like that in our facility all the time, so we, we want to make sure that security is, is, is good there. So, yeah, that's not an issue at all. Okay, you may have hit on this a little bit before, but uh, someone's asking, they saw that we had ball drop testing, but is that the only type of drop test offered? Oh, no, we do we do pretty much any kind of drop test that you want to do, and we can change the size and the height, you know, depending on what you want to do. We could drop your, you know, your toaster oven to see, if, if, you know, if it's going to break at a two-foot drop or a three-foot drop. Or, like I said before, we do packaging testing. So if you wanted to see, you know, what it would look like, after it's been dropped your package. And we could do that with high speed video and get some really cool information or well even you can high speed video it if you're dropping the parts. So it gives you a little more about the impact and what impacts affect what. It's pretty cool. Okay, that uh that looks like all the, the questions that have come through, Lisa. Well great. Well with that we're gonna wrap it up. I would like to remind everyone that the this webinar will be available in our webinar section of our website and you'll be able to get the recording there and the slide deck. Thank you for your time.